America, my country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. Let's say that. Let freedom ring. That's what I'm talking to you about today. Let freedom ring. The words from this song called America, My Country, Tis of Thee, were written by Samuel Francis Smith in 1831, but it was actually performed on Independence Day in a celebration in Boston on July 4th, 1831, and it's become popular ever since. In Dr. Martin Luther's speech on April 28th, 1963 at Lincoln's Memorial in Washington, D.C. Let freedom ring was a theme that was used and it's reminiscent of the lyrics and the idea of the song that I just shared with you today. And I give you some excerpts as Dr. King said, now is the time for justice to ring out for all of God's children. And I say to you, my friends, let freedom ring. And when this happens... When we allow freedom to ring, we'll be able to join hands together and sing free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. So I join in with this song. I join in with Dr. King. I say, let freedom ring. Specifically, I'm talking about the ideals of life, liberty, and the pursuit of of happiness, that they would spread and flourish across the earth. And so today, 245 years later, on this birthday of the United States of America, we're still declaring, let freedom ring. Now, anyone or anything that's birthed it's understood that that person or that thing is not perfect. It's not flawless. Need me to break that down? You were born and you're not perfect. I was born and I'm not perfect. But surely at somebody's birthday party, we're celebrating the person. We're celebrating the event. And as it was already offered in prayer today, thanksgiving for either who that person is or what it is. And so what I'm saying is I know America's not perfect and we can share concerns and we're praying for renewals, but let us not forget to thank God for the land in which we live. Amen. Regardless, if you're an American citizen, if you're holding a work visa, if you have a green card, or if you're a landed immigrant, we all have America in common. And so I say, happy birthday, America. And I say, God bless America. Let freedom ring. The ideals of life and liberty, that they would be spread, that they would be propagated, that they would be advocated. Yes, in this country, but hear me, not only in this country, but let freedom ring in our spiritual journey and in our relationship with Jesus Christ. We say it, we pledge it. We're one nation under God, indivisible. Let's not forget that under God part. The very form of our government is mirrored in Scripture. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 22. For the Lord is our judge, judicial branch. The Lord is our lawgiver, the legislative branch. The Lord is our king, the executive branch. And he will save us. Hallelujah. Yet it is he, the Lord, that saves us. 
and its liberty and its justice for all. Everybody say, for all. Look at your neighbor and say, that's you. Hallelujah. We got to continue to call for freedom and justice, not for some, but for all. In fact, if you look at the same Isaiah chapter 3, 33 chapter, and go to verse 5, it declares that the Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high, and he has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. Isaiah is prophesying that this Messiah king that was to come was going to bring righteousness and justice to the land. And when Christ's kingdom is established, Jerusalem is going to be the home of justice and righteousness because Messiah will reign there. And can you imagine as the light of the world, Jerusalem will be that holy city. But hear me, until then, I will not stop the cry for freedom to reign. I'm still going to call for the church to be the church and to declare Christ's kingdom to come here and now. Let his will come on earth as it is in heaven. There's coming a day when there will be perfect justice and righteousness. But until that comes, we're going to preach it. We're going to believe it. We're going to practice it. We're going to share it. We're going to love one another. Let freedom ring. Hallelujah. See, freedom is not just some patriotic idea. Freedom, are you listening, is a God-given gift to his creation. It's endowed by the creator. Now that was in our official document. But 2 Corinthians chapter 3, the ultimate document, says in verse 17, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You hear me. You could be bound physically, and I pray you never will. But as long as the Spirit is with us, it is a God-given gift that freedom comes from God. Hallelujah! Chick-fil-A says, and sorry to bring it up because you can't go there today. These businesses ought to pay me to mention. I preached one time about Waffle House and people showed up. Chick-fil-A says, we didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. What I'm trying to tell you is the USA did not create freedom. It's our job to defend it. Our forefathers admonished us to preserve it. But God created freedom. And no matter what is in my future, no one can take the liberty away from me from the Spirit of God and the truth of God. Thomas Jefferson said, God who gave us life gave us liberty. So let freedom ring, not just in our country, but let it ring in your life. The Bible speaks of bondage in reference to sin, does it not? Before we experience the gospel of Jesus Christ, sin is slavery. Following a life of pleasure and giving in to any sensual desire that you have, don't ever forget, it leads to slavery. The younger son in prodigal living, he spent everything he had. He was having a great time, but the party days led him to the pig's pen. The apostle Paul said in Titus chapter 2, verse 3, he said, For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, look at this, serving various lust and pleasure, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Let me tell you, are you listening? It is bondage. It is bondage to have a passion of hate and malice and envy. When you do that, you're the one that's miserable, not even the one you hate or envy. 
You can say it feels good to hate them. No, it doesn't. You're miserable, and the one you hate is going on whistling Dixie. I said that for the 4th of July. Hallelujah. Isn't it true? Look at Scripture. Look at Titus 3.3. 3. Even lust and pleasures become our master. Once, when you used to do it out of sheer pleasure, it becomes enslaving. It becomes obligatory. You no longer have a choice. Your addiction is your master. Your pride says get it or else. You say I don't want this any longer. But your boss says do it anyway. Let me tell you the pleasures of sin last for a season. Let me tell you that's not the life I want to live. And that's not the life you have to live. You can be free. Free. The gospel will set you free. The gospel set me free. Anybody here used to be in chains, but you've been set free. You've been set free by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I might just preach here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 6, 14, sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Hallelujah. When you drop down to verse 17, but God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, hear it, yet you obeyed from the heart. That form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. You're going to serve something. I'm going to serve Jesus. You know, many people think that freedom means you can do anything you want. No, look at verse 14. You are now free to obey from the heart. Jesus Christ frees us from desires and the control of sin. Jesus further supported this when you look at John 8. One time he said to some Jews in verse 31, Jews that believed in him, If you abide in me, in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth... So I've got abiding in the word. I've got knowing the truth. And what does the truth do? It sets you free. Jesus himself is the truth that sets us free. He's the life. He's the source. He's the way. He's the standard of what is right. And let me tell you what he can do. He can set you free from the consequences of sin and self-deception and deception by Satan. He shows us that clear path to everlasting life. No, no. Jesus doesn't give us the freedom to do what we want. He gives us the freedom to follow him. My mind went back to, anybody remember this? And I don't know if kids do that this day or not. I don't know if this transferred over decades. But you ever been around somebody that was annoying you? Whatever it was. Sorry to me. Clipping their fingernails, whatever it is that gets you, all right? And you say, stop doing that. And they say, no, free country. Where's my 12 and under? Is that, is that still a thing? You ever said free country? It is now, Okay. You didn't agree that a free country meant they could interfere with your rights, your space, and your freedom, all right? So you don't say, free country, I do what I want. No, as we seek to serve God, his perfect truth sets us free to be all that he wants us to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at verse 34. Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Come on, let's do that again. Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. You say, I'm going to sin because I get to do what I want. 
Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. It has a way of enslaving us and controlling us and dominating us and dictating our action. But Jesus can set us free from that slavery and help us to become the person that he's called us to be. If sin is restraining you, if sin is mastering you, if sin is enslaving you, you can break that power over your life. Because Jesus said in verse 36, Therefore, if the Son has set you free, then you are free indeed. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to testify. I am free from sin. I am free from addiction. I am free from guilt. I can look at my wife, my son, my daughter, my church. I am free from but i'm also free too i'm free to worship i'm free to choose i'm free to obey let freedom ring in this country <laughs> hallelujah in this country but also in your life hallelujah feel free to say hallelujah Feel free to say what you feel like saying to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I won't take the time in Luke 4 to set a beautiful context of Jesus' words. But he does say in verse 18 of Luke 4, the Spirit of the Lord's upon me because he's anointed me. What is he anointing me to do? To preach the gospel to the poor to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and set at liberty all those who are oppressed. Have you noticed Jesus' list there in Luke? It's people that are oppressed, marginalized, poor, brokenhearted, captives, blind, bruised. But he said, I came to let freedom ring to whoever you are whatever you are or whatever you are not. And if you're a guest here today or if this is your home church, I'll remind you that the gospel and abundant life is for whosoever will. It is for anybody. It doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have. It doesn't matter what culture you come from. It doesn't matter what way of life. Let me tell you, the Son has set us all free. Clark Cawthorn, in his book, Detours, tells of a story that his family encountered an unexpected guest one night. That guest was a squirrel. It came down the chimney into the wood-burning stove in the basement of their Michigan home. Cawthorn wrote, you know, I thought if that squirrel knew that I was there to help, I could just reach in and gently lift him out. I'm trying to help you, Mr. Squirrel. He said, nothing doing. He said, when I reached in, that squirrel began scratching like he was overdosed on espresso. He said, we finally managed to construct a cardboard box cage complete with a big, large hole cut on one side, and we put it up against that wood-burning stove's door. And that squirrel just waltzed into that box. And then we let that squirrel out to safety in our backyard. He said, you know, I got to thinking about that. Listen carefully. Isn't it funny, before redemption, our little visitor frantically tried to bash its way out of its dark prison. It seemed that the harder the squirrel struggled in its own strength to get free, the more pain it caused itself. In the end, that squirrel simply had to wait patiently until one who was much bigger one who could peer into his world and could carry him safely to a larger world where he really belonged. 
As we wrap this up today, that's what we need the Lord to do for every one of us here today. You've scrapped, you've fought, you've tried to get free. You've been defensive. You may have been angry, bitter towards God, others, when they're reaching in to try to help you. But let me tell you, there's just some things we can't do on our own. When I say you can be free today, you do understand you can't do it. But He can. I said He can. And He came to this world, that God-man, God in Christ came so that you and I could find freedom from sin, baggage, bondage, hurts. And just to be clear, you can be saved and still hobble into heaven with your hurts, your misunderstandings, your wounds. But what would happen today if we said, you know, I'm just making a decision that I want to be free from all that. I don't want those things to bind me and distract me. I want freedom to ring in my heart. If you bow your heads, please, right now. Lord Jesus, I've done what I felt you've directed me to do. And now, Lord, I put the box up against the cage. Ultimately, you did that when you came in flesh and threw your death, burial, and resurrection, that good news. You've provided a way for us to apply your gospel through repentance and baptism in water by your name, Jesus, and the infilling and receiving of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you made that way, but I stand here today as your messenger. How shall they hear without a preacher? And I have with you put that box up against their caged door. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that they would take advantage. I cannot do it for them. No one can do that for them. But somebody here today is going to say, I'm going to let freedom ring in my heart. I'm going to let go. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to release the things that's had power over me. And I'm going to trust you as the ultimate justice. I can't fix things, but you can, Lord. So right now, in the name of Jesus, do what I cannot do. Say what I cannot say. Go places to the heart of these sweet people that only you can go and do a work here as we trust you. As we trust you, Lord, as we stand on your word that you, the Son of God, set free. We're free indeed. In the name of Jesus, would you pray right where you are? 